Assalamu alaikum. Today's video is about the vital signs. What are the vital signs? Why vital signs are important? And how the vital signs are assessed? What are vital signs? The vital signs are a group of most important medical signs that we use to get information about the patient's physical state and the psychological states of the patient. And uh, these are a basic component of every assessment of physiological and psychological health. Now, why vital signs are assessed? First, these help us to assess the general physical health of a person. And these also give us clues about the possible diseases if the patient is having any disease and show progress towards the recovery. Because in the disease state, the vital signs are not in normal range. These are out of the normal range. And when a patient starts to recover or a patient recovers, the vital signs also return to the normal range. So these are the reasons why vital signs are very important. Now there are four primary vital signs, body temperature, pulse or the heart rate, respirations and the blood pressure. The normal values for these vital signs are, for the body temperature the normal value is 97 to 99 degree Fahrenheit and the average is taken as the 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. The pulse or the heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute, respiration 16 to 20 breaths per minute and blood pressure is systolic blood pressure of less than 120 mm of Hg and a diastolic blood pressure of less than 80 mm of Hg is normal. For assessing the vital signs, we need some supplies or the equipments. We need thermometer, stethoscope, sphygmomanometer or the blood pressure apparatus, watch, disinfectant swabs, gloves and other uh, appropriate personal protect protective equipments if applicable. If the patient is contagious or if there is a fear of spreading the infection from the patient to the healthcare worker. Starting the procedure. How we have to start the procedure? The first and foremost thing and the most important step is to identify the patient. We can identify the patient by asking him to repeat his name or we can look at his wristband where the basic information is noted like the name and date of birth. Second, we have to introduce ourselves to the patient and take the verbal consent for assessing the vital signs because this helps us to win the confidence of the patient and to make the patient comfortable. The next is to wash the hands and wear the appropriate personal protective equipments. Starting with the body temperature. The body temperature is defined as the degree of heat maintained by the body or the balance between the heat produced and the heat lost by the body. There are various processes which are meant for the generation of heat in the body and other processes are meant for the loss of heat from the body. And the body temperature is the balance between this uh, heat loss and the heat generation. There are several routes through which the body temperature can be assessed like the oral route which is the most used route and the axillary route but the temperature taken by the axillary route is 1 degree Fahrenheit lower than that of the oral temperature we can take the temperature through the temporal route tympanic route and the rectal route the rectal temperature is 1 degree Fahrenheit higher than the normal temperature we have to remember these points because while documenting the temperature of the patient we also have to document the route through which, which the temperature was taken. Now the procedure for taking the body temperature. The first step is to remove the thermometer from the disinfectant jar and rinse it with the cold water. The thermometer is placed inside the disinfectant jar to get disinfected and help to prevent the spread of infection from one patient to the another patient and after removing it from the disinfectant jar it is rinsed with the cold water to remove the disinfectant so that the patient doesn't get any unpleasant taste in his mouth when the uh, thermometer is placed in the uh, patient's mouth. After removing it and uh, rinsing it with the cold water, clean the thermometer with a clean cotton swab from bulb to stem. Remember we have to clean the thermometer from bulb to stem because before the procedure the bulb is the least contaminated and this stem is the most contaminated uh, region of the thermometer and the cleansing procedure always takes place from the least contaminated region to the most contaminated region. 
place the thermometer under the patient's tongue or in the sublingual pouch this is very important because if the thermometer is not placed properly we there are chances that we get a false reading after placing it in the sublingual pouch tell the patient to grasp it with his lips and not to bite the thermometer with the teeth then wait for at least two to three minutes uh, so that the thermometer records the body temperature of a patient and then remove the thermometer from the patient's mouth note the reading on the thermometer and wipe the thermometer with disinfectant swab from stem to bulb first the cleansing procedure took place from bulb to stem and after the procedure we have to clean it from stem to bulb because after the procedure the stem becomes least contaminated and the bulb becomes most contaminated region of the uh, thermometer and after cleaning it with uh, the cotton swab place the uh, thermometer in the second disinfectant jar to get uh, it disinfected the next vital sign is the pulse the pulse is defined as the alternate rise and fall of an artery as the wave of blood is forced through it during the left ventricle contraction the aorta starts from the left ventricle and branches into numerous arteries when the left ventricle contracts the blood in the left ventricle is forced into the aorta and uh, the arteries and this creates a wave like motion in the arterial walls which is detected as the pulse now there are two methods for taking the pulse either by using a stethoscope which is called the apical pulse by placing the bell or the diaphragm of the stethoscope on the at the fourth or fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line or by palpating an artery uh, by the fingertips there are various sites at which the pulse can be assessed these include the temporal artery facial artery carotid artery apical pulse brachial artery radial femoral popliteal posterior tibial and the dorsalis pedis artery now some characteristics of the pulse the first is the rate it is the number of uh, pulse beats in a minute rhythm whether the pulse is regular or irregular volume it is the uh, fullness of the artery tension it is the degree of compressibility of an artery the next vital sign is the respiration the respiration process involves taking in of oxygen and giving out of carbon dioxide this is the process of respiration and one rise and one fall of the chest wall constitutes one respiration cycle the characteristics of uh, respiration include the rate which is the number of breaths per minute rhythm whether the respiration is uh, regular or irregular and the depth this is the uh, count of the volume inhaled and exhaled during respiration the procedure for assessing pulse and respirations first to give the uh, patient a lying position we can also assess the respirations and uh, pulse in a sitting position but the lying position is most preferably used position after giving the patient a lying position place the patient's hand on his chest and locate the pulse point of the radial artery with two to three fingertips and uh, hold the watch in another hand uh, and uh, start to count the pulse for at least 30 seconds and then multiply with two provided the pulse is regular but if it is irregular then you have to count it for a full minute after counting the pulse assess its other characteristics like the rhythm volume and the tension while your hand is still on the patient's hand start to count the respirations and assess its rate rhythm uh, and the depth don't let patient uh, to know that you are assessing his respirations because if the patient becomes aware of this he uh, may alter his respiration pattern count the respirations for 30 seconds like the pulse and then multiply with two provided the respirations are regular but if the respirations are irregular then you have to count these for a full minute the next vital sign is the blood pressure when the left ventricle contracts it pushes the blood from the ventricle into the blood vessels and this exerts a force against the walls of these blood vessels which is termed as the blood pressure 
the classification of blood pressure as per the american college of cardiology the normal blood pressure is considered a systolic blood pressure of less than 120 mm of hg and a diastolic blood pressure of less than 80 mm of hg the elevated blood pressure is systolic 120 to 129 mm of hg and a diastolic blood pressure of less than 80 mm of hg the hypertension stage 1 is considered a systolic blood pressure of uh, 130 to 139 mm of hg and a diastolic blood pressure of 80 to 89 mm of hg and the hypertension stage second is the systolic blood pressure of 140 mm of hg or above than that and a diastolic blood pressure of 90 mm of hg or above the procedure for taking the blood pressure note if the patient is excited or if the patient has done some activity make the patient wait for at least 15 minutes uh, before taking the blood pressure place the patient in a sting or a lying position and uh, place his arm at the level of the heart locate the brachial artery by palpating it and apply the deflated cuff two centimeters above the antecubital fossa and apply it securely place the bell or the diaphragm of stethoscope on the brachial artery and now uh, start to inflate the cuff slowly and note the point at which the pulse disappears and continue to inflate the cuff 20 uh, millimeters of mercury above the point at which the pulse disappeared and uh, stop at this point now start to deflate the cuff very slowly and note the point at which the pulse first appears and this reading is the systolic blood pressure Continue the, uh, you the deflation process and uh, note the point at which the pulse disappears again and this reading is the diastolic blood pressure. Now we have taken both systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. Now completely deflate the cuff and remove it fr from the patient's arm. This completes our procedure of taking the blood pressure. Now the aftercare. Make the patient comfortable on the bed and take all the equipments that we used for assessing the vital signs to the utility room and perform hand hygiene. Immediately document the readings or the procedure. Note in case of the uh, temperature, we also have to note down the route through which the temperature was assessed. This completes our procedure of vital signs.